most common symptoms of iron deficiency are fatigue, brain fog or cognitive impairment or memory impairment, pica, that means a desire to chew on non-nutrient dense things, uh, most commonly ice, but sometimes plastic, paper, paint chips. Restless leg symptoms are common in folks with iron deficiency. Folks that have restless leg symptoms, even without iron deficiency, usually their symptoms are worse when they're iron deficient. And of course, the biggest sign of iron deficiency is that you have a microcytic anemia, but you can have symptoms of iron deficiency even if you're not anemic. My general rules of thumb for who needs an iron infusion, a ferritin less than 20, a transferrin saturation or TSAT less than 20%, and you've tried oral iron replacement for three months and not had an adequate response, or you tried oral iron replacement and you couldn't tolerate it, most commonly due to constipation, but sometimes also GI upset like dyspepsia, upset stomach after you take the iron pill. If you meet those criteria, you meet criteria for iron infusion if you want one. Most commercial payers will cover if you meet those criteria. Medicare and Medicaid will pay if you meet those criteria. A couple of other circumstances where I may recommend you go straight to IV iron would be severe iron deficiency anemia, but you don't meet the criteria for a blood transfusion. If you're in the third trimester of pregnancy, we don't have time to wait for oral iron to work, and we really would like your stores to be replete before you deliver. If you're a cardiac patient, in particular prior to cardiac surgery, if you decline blood transfusion on religious grounds and you're planned for surgery, that's the most common ones I can think of. If you can think of other indications for iron infusion, drop them in the comments below. Hope that helps. Follow for more information about blood.